Hey guys, it's Maymay and welcome back to another upcycled video, or as we like to call them, been to beauty videos with me and Gareth from G's Creations. Now what that means is you'll be able to see my video today and head over to Gareth's channel and see his video, which I will link below. Today I'm upcycling this Nestle hot chocolate can, which is a big old can actually. This was a 1.73 pounds, so 27 ounce can, so it's a big one. And then I have to upcycle this old plate. It's a cookies for Santa plate, but it got put in the microwave and it got melted here on the edge and it got melted in here, so it's not as cute as it used to be. And I thought, you know what, let's turn it into something cute. So I've turned the plate upside down and I have my can here. And what I've been challenged to do, I'm gonna put a picture in here to show you. Gareth said, I wanna make a top hat like this um, kind of like you did your sand, your snowman hat before, and I'll link the video to my snowman candle holder that I did before. I'll link that, and then we'll do this video together. But his challenge was for me to use the um, um, the Uncle Sam hat. I couldn't get it out. The Uncle Sam style hat and make a Fourth of July um, top hat. So I've decided to make an Uncle Sam style hat out of these two pieces: the plate and the can and then I'm going to put flowers inside so it'll be a vase or an arrangement for my um, dining room table. So I'll show you it you know as we go along. The first thing I'm going to do is hot glue this guy to this guy. Now hot glue may not be the perfect way to go. You might want to use some E6000 or something because these are some non-porous surfaces. However, I'm going to paint them together in one color so I feel like the hot glue and the paint sealing it up will hold it and it's not going to get any real wear and tear. It's just going to sit on a table. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue this can to this plate. The cool thing about this plate is it has this rim so it kind of fits in there perfectly which is really neat. Now the other cool thing about this project, or the other thing that I'm really excited about with this project, is that I get to use some chalk paint, which I have not used yet. So I ran by Walmart on my way home today, and I picked up three colors of chalk paint. Can you imagine what colors they were? You guessed it, red, white, and blue. That's what I got. So I thought that'll be cool to use um, to get to try out chalk paint for the first time and do this upcycle challenge project. Well, that grabbed really quick. I can't even move it. So that's cool. So here's the shape we're going for. Um, so this is the base, and then I left the open part here because I'm gonna turn that into a vase. Um, so we're gonna paint the entire thing. Let me show you these colors I got. They're by Waverly. They're a little expensive. They were about $6 a bottle. You get a lot. Um, they're actually by Plaid, and they're the Waverly brand on there. But they look beautiful. You ever seen a color you want to paint with? That's what these are. I also got this blue. So the colors I got were Ocean, and plaster and crimson. Now I went with the plaster color because the white was very ivory colored and the ivory was also ivory which was interesting to me. So the white didn't look white at all but I think this will look more um, white. And these are a matte chalk paint. Now from what I have seen, I've never used these before, but from what I have seen they will cover just about anything. So we're going to see if that works with this brand as well. See if we can get in there and get that guy started. Now I got paint on my X-Acto blade. Let's get in here. This is making a big old mess for me. Let's let that drip off a little bit. This paint is really pretty. Can you see how rich it looks? I think it looks gorgeous. And I've got it on my fingers already. You just gotta get it there, right? So we're gonna start painting and see how this looks. And my plan is to paint the entire thing in white. So basically, we are going to prime the entire thing in this white color. Then we're going to come back and do the pretty colors and bring them all in. Now I think that this would probably do one coat well enough, but I can still see the can through. But this is pretty amazing. I want to show you how good that's doing. Can you see that? That's pretty good, isn't it? But I think I'm still going to do two coats on it. I feel like it might need two coats, but I'm pretty impressed with how that paint is sticking to that can. That's pretty amazing. There's a bonus with this project because I decided to use this hot chocolate can. My whole craft room smells like chocolate. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> it really does. It smells delish. Look at that. That is pretty good. I am still going to do two coats on it. Because I want a nice, clean uh, base to work with. And this is going to give us that. That is pretty good. Can you see that? I mean, you can still see through it, but considering I was painting directly onto like paper, 
That's pretty good. I'm going to paint the top in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead down here to the base and paint this little plastic plate. And that's what I like about this um, chalk paint is it kind of goes on every surface. I've seen people use it on just about every surface you can imagine. And so they don't have to do any primer or anything, and that's what I like. I guess the chalk version or whatever they put in it for chalk is kind of what does the priming for you. And I love that because that saves us a step. So this is one coat. You can see it's on the plate as well as the um, top hat part. And there's Santa Claus. <laughs> but I'm going to paint him too. But I'm going to let this top part dry first. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this while it's sitting here. And get this rim all nice and white. This paint is amazing. I was hoping it would be this good in person. And it really is. So, I'm going to do this. I'm going to let this coat dry. Now, I'm not going to heat it with the heat, gun, heat gun or anything. I'm not going to rush it because I just want it to be nice and smooth. And I don't want to take a chance of it bubbling or anything. Probably wouldn't, but I'm just going to let it dry by itself. And then, I'm going to put a second coat. So, the next time you see this, it will have two dry coats on it. So, I have painted it with the white and I let it dry. It looks like this. And I want to show you something I did. It's not going to show, but there was a big, huge gap between the plate rim and the can. So, I took my hot glue gun and I just ran a bead of hot glue in there. But I'm going to cover that up with decoration, so it's not going to show. So, that's what I did. Now then, this is the red paint, which is just stunning. But I want to show you another tip. In between drying, like I painted the coat and let it sit to dry. To keep your sponge brush from drying out, if you have some of these little plastic bags, they could even be Ziploc bags or just a piece of cling wrap or something like that, if you'll stick your brush into the plastic and just let the plastic touch the brush, for some reason that keeps that paint from drying. And I have done this before, so I know this works. If you need to paint the next day, like if you're not going to finish today, if you'll put this in the freezer, it'll stay wet and you will not have an issue when you come back to use it. So just a tip. So in between my coats, I put it in the plastic bag and see how wet it still is? So that brush is still ready to use. Now, it won't last forever because air is in here, but um, to prolong it a little while works pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to use another brush for the red. Now, I'm probably going to make some of you guys cringe on this part because I'm going to eyeball this. <laughs> I am the queen of it, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this this way. For this part, what I did was I looked on my phone, and I found a picture of um, Uncle Sam's hat. And basically what it is, is the red, the brim is red, and the stripes are red from about here down. And then this part is blue with stars on it. And I'm thinking I might use ribbon for that. I'm not sure. I bought the blue paint just in case, but I may just use ribbon, but we'll see. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this foam brush, and I'm going to kind of get that paint worked into it so that it's not drippy. Just doing this. And I'm going to use my brush, and I'm just going to eyeball a straight line. And if they don't line up directly, I mean, if, they don't, if they're not a perfect lineup, I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to look kind of hand-done, handmade, and that's what we're going for. And I'm just using the width of the brush for the stripe. So I got that started. And it's still going to be cute. It'll be kind of Americana looking. You know what I'm saying? Like... Um, toll painting maybe? No, I guess that's too perfect, isn't it? Toll painting is very perfect. Just give that little Americana stripe look. It's still going to look good. Then I'm going to move over about the width of the brush. Get that in there good. About the width, just eyeballing, and do another stripe. Just like this. Now I'm going to do this all the way around. And I'm not going to stress about it being absolutely perfect. Now I'm going to tell you. If you just got to have perfect, get yourself some painter's tape and just tape these stripes off, which I probably would have done, but I couldn't find it. And I'm, I'm kind of glad I couldn't find it because I want this to be a fun project and I don't want to overthink it, especially in an upcycle situation like this. I don't want to overthink what I'm doing. So I'm going to come here and do another stripe, just straight down, as straight as it'll go. It doesn't have to be perfect. Keep telling yourself, you're not going to stress about it, and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be cute, it's going to look good on your table, and it's going to be very patriotic, and that's what matters. Now, if you don't like the unevenness of your paint strokes or whatever, you can always come back with a smaller brush, and you can doctor them up and kind of neaten them out. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to work with the, with the really free, free, what's the word here, free form. That's what I'm trying to get out. So, I'm just going to let it be. <laughs> And enjoy it. So let's see if we can line up pretty. That might be fun if it lines up right, huh? So another brush stroke about the same distance away as the thickness of the sponge brush. 
This is super fun. And by the way, if you're wondering about these paints, I love them. This is two coats of the chalk. Now, I still think it might could have used one more coat if I was really wanting it to be perfectly covered. But I'm not too worried about it. As you can tell, I'm not stressing about it. So, um, but I think this paint is, it has the best feel to it. Just rich. Um, it feels a lot more expensive than it actually is, which is a cool thing. Because like I said, I felt like it was expensive and it feels more expensive than that. So that's cool. I might can get two more in here and we might come out pretty even, huh? So one right here. And remember, you can pick the stripes you like best and put them toward the front of your table where, the table where that's where you see before anything else. You can always do that. If they're too close together right here, you can make sure these are in, on the back of the table if they're too close for you. I'm just not going to stress. But I will probably put this one to the back since it's a little close together. Okay, so look, a little striped hat. I think it looks cute. I like it. It's very um, almost circusy, isn't it? Now I didn't go all the way to the bottom of that brim, and that's okay because, like I said, that's going to get um, some blue down there. It's either going to get blue paint or it's going to get blue um, ribbon. All right, so now I'm going to paint the brim red because the ones that I've seen online, the brim is red. And by using that chalk paint first underneath, I think it's really going to make this. Maybe even only need one coat. I'm not sure because I used a white under there. So we'll see how it does. But it might only need one coat. And I'm going to paint that um, hot glue again. What I used in there for the sealer. And we're going to cover it. So if it's not perfect right here, I'm not worried about that at all. I think the theme of this project is if it's not perfect, we're not going to worry about it. I think that is the theme. Okay. So, we have our stripes done. We have the red base. And see how messy it is? But it'll be cute when we finish. So, I'm going to let this totally dry. And I think I'm going to come back and do a second coat on everything because I just can't kind of see some of the white through. Can you see the white through the lines? So, I'm going to come back and do a second coat. And then we're going to do the blue. And then we'll be ready to move on to the flower part because I'm going to make it like a little flower base. And so, I hope you're enjoying it so far. I'll see you in a little bit. And it'll be two coats and totally dry. So we're back to my messy station now. Check this out. Okay, so I've painted the stripes. I've painted the bottom. And if you notice on the top, I went ahead and I wrapped the stripes around. And I did that by just using this little paintbrush and just kind of going in here and painting the little tips of it to make the stripes wrap. I don't know if they'll show when we're done, but it just kind of felt unfinished when I didn't have that done. So now it feels like, you know, you can even see how it kind of wraps up. And it does this little guy. Now, it might be a little bit wet, some on the brim. I, I got real heavy with the paint in some places, so I went back and smoothed it out. But I'm so ready to paint this blue. Look how beautiful this blue color is. And I'm going to put a lot of paint because I'm going to let the paint do the work because of where this stripe is. I've got to get kind of low down here. And I don't want it to get onto the other paint. I don't want it to get onto my red. So I'm just going to kind of easy go around. This will probably more than likely take two to three coats because we're going from a red to a white, from a red to a white like that. It'll probably take multiple coats. The good thing is if I do cross this over, if I do get the paint in a spot it shouldn't be and I can always touch it up. I can always paint it with some red or white or wherever I get it where it shouldn't be. This paint is so nice. It's so thick, and I don't want to say forgiving. I don't want, I don't think it's forgiving necessarily because paint really isn't, but it's just very, it's got a good texture to it. I almost like the feel of dry brushing with it, like having your sponge brush not as wet. I think it goes on better that way in a drier feel, and then you can come back and do multiple coats. I don't know why. I just feel like it does. That's why I kind of blot some of the paint off. Seems to work better. So there's one stripe, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do one or two stripes. I may do one and a half. I want that to be a little bit, um, a little bit wider. Let me go back and just extend it just a little bit. So that's how wide I'm going to do the blue stripe. I'm going to let that dry, do a second coat, 
and then we'll be ready to start decorating. Okay, so this guy is painted and he's still drying a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. So I'm gonna sit him to the side and then I'm gonna show you what I did. I have these little stars that I got from the miniature Christmas tree decorating section at Hobby Lobby last year. And I bought every one they had because I fell in love with these little rusty stars, but I didn't want them rusty on my hat. So I painted them with the white chalk paint and you'll have to forgive my hands, it's full of paint, but that's all there is to it. And then I'm gonna use some of this glitter cord that I also got at Christmas time. <laughs> I do a lot of Christmas after Christmas shopping. So this is a glitter cord and it has a little wire in it. And I'm going to wrap that around the base to kind of clean up the where the plate and the can meet. So I'm going to put that aside for now. But I wanted these to be a little bit glittery. So here's what I did. I don't want to wait for glitter to dry because I'm just too lazy for that. So I have my Wink of Stella pen. I know some of you are going to cringe, I bet. But I'm just kind of brushing this on and getting some of the shimmer. And I've noticed that when I do this and put it close, I'm just getting a little bit and put it close to this, you can see the shimmer so it kind of matches. And I think that's kind of cool. So I'm using what I got because I don't want to wait on these all night to dry. And I have this glitter pen, might as well use it. All I'm doing is rubbing glitter on it anyway. It's not hurting it. So these painted up really well too. This is only one coat on these, I didn't do two. They might could have used two. I don't know, that rust is kind of coming through a little bit, but not too bad. So, I'm going to measure how much of this stuff I'm gonna need. And I'm gonna glue it to where it's pretty snug, so it may take me a minute to get this really glued down, because I'm gonna have to kind of hold it till the glue dries. But, we'll get it done. It cuts really, it cuts pretty easy. I'm just using my Tim Holtz shears on it, and it cut pretty good. Okay. So, get that wire in there where it goes. Maybe do a little twirling of it to kind of get it in the right shape so we don't have to fight it too much. Oh, glitter's going everywhere. I hate glitter. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little glue down just on this base. And then I'm gonna put this piece into it. So just to give myself a place to get started. And I'm gonna hold that and let that dry and then I'll show it to you. So you can see how I've got that attached to one spot and now we're just gonna go around and attach it in, you know, different places. I don't think I have to glue it down every single, or all the way, just to where we can get some good tacks. So put that into that glue and hold it nice and snug. Isn't that cute? I think that cleans it up. I may even go back and put this right here. I think I might. I think it'll really clean that up and make it not look quite so sloppy where my paint was not the best paint job I've ever done. A little more hot glue. You can always cover stuff up. And wrap that around. Hold that for a few minutes. And then I'm gonna snip this a tiny bit more off in the back because it's a little too close. Oops, I didn't get that held down long enough. So I got that glue down almost just exactly right in the back. There's a little bitty gap between the two, but not bad. <laughs> I'm gonna get that glitter off of there. And now, I think I am, I'm at least gonna look at what that looks like to put a piece up top. I think it might make it look really nice and clean. Cause see, now this has this nice neat line and that one's kind of sloppy, so that's bothering me. I'm gonna have to do it. Okay, so let's get some more out. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the back, just like I did with the last one. I'm just gonna pile some glue there and get it started. Now I'm going to go around to the side and put just tack some more glue down. And just pull that into place. Yeah, that's going to look a lot neater. Look at that. Isn't that going to look good? I think that'll look a lot cleaner and more finished. So look at that. That looks a lot better. I like it. It's a lot cleaner. Now I'm going to take the stars and we're going to glue them down. Now what I did was I counted the stripes and decided to make one star for every stripe and I'm going to put it at the base of the stripe. So see where the red goes down? I'm going to have the star right here and I'm going to hot glue those on as well. So a little bit of hot glue. Probably a lot because these little stars have like an opening in the back so I'm going to need it to kind of puddle up a little bit behind the star. And I'm just gonna, I don't know, I think I'll put these straight up, because if I don't, I'll hate that I didn't when I come back. So I'm gonna put one piece up, or put, you know, one leg facing up. And those get hot, because they are metal, so you have to be careful with that. <laughs> so 
So there's one. I'm going to go over here to this next one. Put down a little puddle of glue. Just like that. And add a star. This would be something fun for you guys to do with your friends. Just, you know, if you have crafty friends, just challenge each other to do something crafty. I think that'd be super fun. Like, you know, we did the upcycle challenge or um, we also did the envelope board challenge. Just challenge each other and see what you can do with the supplies you've got. It's a fun little thing to do. I know we've enjoyed it very much. We hate when they're finished. Like, this is the last week, so we always get sad on the last week. And then we have to come up with another idea. <laughs> And I'm sure he will. He comes up with the best ideas. He always does. I really love how that looks. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, so now we have our stars on. We have our painting done. Everything is finished on the outside. Isn't that cute as it can be? Okay, now then, I have this styrofoam. I kind of just keep this in my stash. I, you can buy this at the Dollar Tree, and I want to say they're one for a dollar at the Dollar Tree, or you can get them at like Walmart in three packs. And this is like a piece I had left over from a project. And I also have this white styrofoam. And I'm going to take the, um, either one. It doesn't matter which one goes in first. But I'm going to put one in, and then I'm going to put another one on top of it. And it might matter, because I think I'm going to cram this one down into the bottom. Let me see if I can get it crammed. No, I'm going to cram it in the top. Okay, so I'm going to hot glue this to the bottom of the, of the tin, or the um, hot chocolate can. You're probably seeing some smoke flying up there at you. And let that be down into the bottom. And if you have just a piece of styrofoam you can cut to be the right size, just use that. I just want to go ahead and make sure that I have plenty of styrofoam all the way to the top. Because it makes it easier. And now I'm just going to put some glue in here. Like so. And then I'm going to cram this guy in there. And I can clean up the overflow. Get that guy down in there good. And like this part will just come off. So now I bought one of these. Let me move this out of the way for a second. I bought one of these from the Dollar Tree. Do you recognize what this is? This is one of those centerpieces. And it's all from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to utilize this red tissue. Or this red color stuff here. And look what's inside. Isn't that gross? I think that is so gross looking. But I'm going to utilize the red tissue. And I'm also going to utilize all of these pieces in our centerpiece. So let me cut these away. Now I've opened all these out where I can see where they are on the little string here or on the little stand and I'm going to snip these off. And I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to throw that away. Now look how many little pieces we got for a dollar. And you can use these in your centerpiece. Trust me, it'll work. I know it looks messy right now, but we'll get there. This is the tissue that we took off and I'm going to cut it in half. in true upcycle fashion. I'm gonna fold it, actually I'm gonna cut this in half again. I think I've got plenty to do it this way too. Like so, and I'm gonna take this and tuck it down into the side where it sticks out something like that. So it kind of hides these holes and it hides some of the, um, some of the foam. Just gonna stick that in there. Might as well use it, we paid for it. And you can use tissue or you could use some, um, like, grass, you know, the little, like the little, um, fuzzy stuff. Or you could, anything that you can stick in here to hide it or just, just kind of disguise it. And don't worry, when we put the flowers in, that won't look so, you know, perfectly pointed, but it'll help to hide. Okay, now then, check these out. I got these at the Dollar Tree. Also, look at these three color red, white, and blue flowers. And they were a dollar a stem, and I bought three stems. Because I this is my thing. I'm not good at flower arranging, but here's what I have discovered. If you will fill it up with flowers, like really put a lot of flowers in, it looks better than fewer flowers. So if you're not good at flower arranging, this is a good way to make it look like you are. Just cram it full. <laughs> That's my tip. Cram it full of flowers. All right, now these are clearly too long, so I'm going to take each one of these off. The way I do it is to wiggle it like this and then pull. It comes loose. Now, okay, so everybody is off of their, um, off the main stem. We are ready to start stuffing our container with flowers. I'm going to move these so you guys can see. I'll put them to this side. We'll bring this guy to the middle. Okay, so you want to pick like the tallest flower. This, The first one we're going to put in is going to be our tallest flower, meaning this first one is going to establish how tall 
your centerpiece will be. So I'm looking for one of the taller ones. Those are about the same, so we'll use that. So I'm going to go to the center of the centerpiece and press this guy in. And he's going to determine how tall I want my centerpiece. So I'm going to turn this down so you can see it. Do you see that? So that's a little bit too tall for me. So I'm going to push him on down. Just about like that. And that's pretty good. He's about six inches out of there. Then from there, I'm just going to alternate colors. That was blue and red. This one's going to be blue and white. And I'm just going to poke it in. Now you can also, if your stems are too long, and I'm going to use these kind of utility scissors, you can just snip them off. And then once you've established your height, you kind of know, you know where the next ones need to go so you don't have to have that big long stem anymore. When I was in high school, my best friend's mother was a floral arranger, and I thought, I wish I could do that. I never learned it. I, I should have just gone and stood and watched her do that. But she was so good at it. She and her sister, they could make the best floral arrangements. So if you have friends whose moms know how to arrange flowers, learn it from them. Because <laughs> I'm the worst at it. But I'm just kind of going around in a circle around where I put that first one in, and just kind of placing these, kind of in an outward motion like that, not too much. Just a little bit. And I am trying to alternate the colors. Now then, it's going to be harder to see in the camera, but you can see how I've got the flowers there. And they're very loose. I just kind of stuck them in there. And some are ha hanging longer than others, and some are poking out further. And that's okay, because we're going to go back and do some fill-in with these pieces that we cut off of our little um, centerpiece thing. So, like, these are already on a wire. So I'm just going to go right down here into the styrofoam and just press those in. And that's going to give me a little bit of like a firework or a little something different sticking out. So anywhere you have a little open spot or what feels like a bare spot, that's what you want to do. Stick these little guys in. Now I want to show you. Let's say you have some that aren't quite long enough. And you know we've been cutting these little stems off of those flowers, so we've got these. You can take this little guy and wrap that wire around this and you basically extend it. So if you want it to be taller and stick out a little higher, you can just extend it that way. And so there was a leaf in my way. So see, now I've made that one stick out much higher by doing it like that. And so, let's do another one on the other side. Kind of even them out. It's my last one. All right, so that's the stars. I know how hard this is for you guys to see. I wish I had a different camera angle, but there's the little stars in there. And now the next thing I'm going to put in are these little guys, these little sparkly things that poke out. Now I'm going to trim this down because there are several in here. So I'm going to take this little piece and I'm just going to cut them apart and just make separate ones. See that? I think you can buy these in like the floral department. I'm not sure, but I think you can. I didn't. You saw what I did. I just cut that piece apart because for a dollar I'm getting a lot of stuff. I'm trying to be a little frugal here. So I've cut all of these little pieces apart like so and I'm going to utilize these stems again like we did the first time and some scotch tape. Now this is not how a florist does it. A florist uses floral tape for this sort of thing and I have some floral tape but this will be faster for me and you're not going to see it because it's going to be tucked in. So I'm just going to tape these right to these little green stems we have left over. Don't waste anything because we are upcycling. And I'm creating these. Okay, so now we can put these into our arrangement just by sticking those in. I'm gonna poke it way down in so they'll kind of they'll kind of look like fireworks drooping out. It'll be really cute when you can see it. Oh, I would need a different camera angle, but when you can see it in pictures, it'll look super cool. So I'm gonna stick these in, and then I'm gonna put make a picture of it and show you, so you don't have to watch me do this at such a terrible angle. And then you'll see exactly how our top hat turned out. <laughs> 